so this review session, uh, we are going to look at chapter, I will call this chapter 21, but actually it has a bit of 19 and 20. La, so you need to know a bit of a potential divider. This is the OMS. Okay, so uh, in order to solve these questions, number one, you need to know what is a potential divider circuit. If you cannot do the potential divider, you pre probably should not do anything in this topic because that's where things start, okay? So for potential divider, the whole idea is the ratio of the potential difference across two resistors that are in series, like so. So maybe this is 9 volt, maybe this is ground. So ground is 0 volt. Let's say this resistance is R1 and this resistance is R2, okay? And then let's say the potential difference here is V1 and the potential difference here is V2. So we use ratio law. There are two relationships or two ways we can write this. We can say R1 over V1 is equal to R2 over V2. Or we can say that V1 is equal to the resistance of R1 over R1 plus R2 times 9. Because what I'm doing is, if let's say I rearrange, V1 over R1 is equal to 9, which is the total potential difference because V1 plus V2 is 9, R1 plus R2. Whichever, lah, you can do can now, all right? Cannot do, go practice, all right? Main idea number two. Once you know the potential divider, you should be able to differentiate the different types of op-amp circuits. So there are three op-amp circuits. Okay, that goes without saying you need to know basic stuff like V equal IR, la, okay? You don't know, then please install back the memory, okay? So uh, the three op M circuits and be able to distinguish them. The first one is the easier one, which is comparator. The comparator circuit, the main tell is that it is open loop. So this Okay, let me show you a comparator circuit because I didn't choose one that is completed one. So a comparator circuit that has an open loop will look something. So this is a closed loop. We close the loop from output to input. This is an open loop. Show you one more example. Closed loop. So from the nose to the end, the tail end of the triangle, from the nose to the base of the triangle, this is a closed loop not comparator this one haven't drawn all yet no comment no comment open loop comparator open loop comparator open loop comparator okay or not okay now closed loop not comparator okay so comparator circuit this one normally uh they will ask you to do explain and the whole purpose of a comparator circuit is to do is to find the differences between V in and V out. So we are comparing V minus and V plus. So when you have an op M, here got one minus, here got one plus one. This input is V minus law is also known as the inverting input because of the minus sign. And then whatever we connect here to V plus, this is the non-inverting input. So we are comparing these two. And if V minus bigger than V plus, then the output so whatever that comes out from here is V out. So V out will be equal to V supply. So here to here, we'll draw out a whisker. This is your Vs plus Vs minus Vs. If it's 5 volt, then it's positive 5 volt or negative 5 volt. So V out will be equal to V supply, but because V minus is bigger, so this one is negative it would be equal to negative Vs. And if V plus is greater than V minus, then V out will be equal to positive 
FVS. All right, so again, we check the sign. So we're just comparing, okay? So I'm going to try a comparator circuit example with you right now, okay? So the first things first, I will drive, I will try one where you don't have to draw, which is this one from May, June 12, paper 42. A bit old. I chose this question because I can also review the properties of op amp. So you need to know what are the properties of ideal op amp. I will add here on top as the brief notes here. So facts that you need to know. I would say maybe Z level zero. You don't know, it's not that bad. Like you can still do the question, just that part you have nothing to write, law, which is the properties of ideal op amp. Think of the ideal computer. What's the property of an ideal computer? Very fast. Okay, so then very fast here means no lag, right? But we cannot write no lag. So we will write something like infinite slew rate. Hang on. Infinite slew rate, aka no lag. Number two, we also want the computer to carry a lot of information for us. So infinite bandwidth. Bandwidth is related to information. We don't want uh, any current to go into the op amp. So infinite input impedance. Impedance here is resistance. So we don't want current to go in. Number four, we also, we we don't want the output to steal some of, we don't want the op amp to steal some of your output. So zero output impedance. I am basically just trying to recall from my Sandirian limited memory. Okay, let me double check this. You think I remember? Oh, I just remember enough to eat. Okay, so we have zero output impedance. Okay, in your notes, you can find it here. So if you want to look at the structure of the op amp, the story, story here, you go and watch. Lah. Okay, so infinite input impedance, yes. Zero output impedance, yes. Infinite bandwidth, infinite slew rate, yes. So this is the best computer. No lag, can store a lot of information. Uh, we don't want current to disturb your computer. We don't want your computer to disturb outside. So zero. And then finally, for all op amp, this is actually pretty important because we're going to use this to discuss some circuit, which is infinite gain. Okay, it's infinite open loop gain. So if you mention open loop is better because when we close the loop for feedback, then we can reduce the gain. Okay. So meaning this one you can write here. Lah. I'm not going to write. So you choose now any four that you can recall. So this is a comparator circuit. You can see it's open loop. Okay, variation with time t is shown. So if I draw this right, I see that the V plus, you see this V plus is connected to ground. So V plus equal to zero volt. This line is my V plus. Miss this graph so familiar, I know. Okay, draw a graph to show the variation t of the output. Okay, so this is my V plus. Let me make it thicker. So you can see. Okay, so this is my V plus. Nah, v plus. Okay, what about my V in? V in is the sinusoidal curve, sinusoidal curve. Okay, so let's look at the first half cycle. For the first half cycle, the sinusoidal curve V in is bigger than, this V in is V minus. So for the first part, V minus is bigger. This part here, this section V minus is bigger than V plus. Okay, so then the V out is negative. Negative 5. Look at the supply. So you go to negative 5. Oh, I know it's a bit here, neither here nor there, but you draw like that. Negative 5, negative 5, negative 5, negative 5, negative 5, negative 5 here until it flips over. Okay, so I think the drawing one is your shoe should be okay. So then this one here, V plus is bigger. The green line is above the sinusoidal curve, so you get positive. Positify all the way until here. So yeah, my line a bit sang it. Tinsy bit sang it. Okay, there we go. Positive. 
So we repeat law. Now if I'm a student, I will just use my ruler to draw la. But I don't have a ruler now, so I'm sad. It's okay. I can still draw. It's not a problem. All right, so something like this. Go and practice a few drawing one. Uh, this one came out in your trials, I believe, and also in your test too. Okay, so practice because this one uh, is very nice one. Like that three mark lay. Saturate at five is one mark. Correct polarity is one mark. V S S V out is saturate. Saturate at plus minus five volt. Polarity correct polarity. And uh change over. So you change where the green and the black graph intersect. That will be one mark. Okay, the output is to be displayed using two LED, a diode emitting red light is to indicate that V out is positive, green light V out is negative. Okay, can, no problem. Let me draw everything first. If V out is positive, this is positive, this is zero current will flow from positive to zero. So my diode, my LED will look like this. Okay, you just draw the LED symbol and don't forget to draw the arrow. So current will flow from positive to zero. Okay, high potential to low potential. For green, your V out is negative, then this is zero. So current will backflow. High potential to low potential. This will be the direction of your current like this. Wow, three marks. Very nice. Okay, la, that's all. Uh, the correct symbol. This is old question. Uh, old question got more marks. One. This one maybe now is two marks only. Symbol of LED correct. One mark. Polarity correct. So one is opposite, la. opposite polarity is one mark. Red and green, co correct polarity is one mark. Uh, of course, in the exam, you can't tell. So I better label the color. This is red and this is green. In exam, you cannot, you are not going to use red pen and green pen. What, right? You're going to use pencil. So make sure you label. So this one is a very easy OPM question. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten marks. Uh, a bit anomalous lah, if you look at the recent years. But when it comes to comparator circuit, they are relatively uh, straightforward. Okay, so this is a comparator circuit. And also, sometimes they will combine the comparator circuit with a potential divider circuit. So I'm going to choose the one that looks a little a touch bit scary. The touch, no big deal. And... This one would be from N ten paper four three. May or may not have discussed but never mind. Just watch again. Okay. Looks a bit concerning, but don't worry. You got this. You study all the complicated circuit in AS already. This is not as complicated as AS. In my humble opinion. Okay. We go for this one. I'm going to draw a bunch of LEDs again. Okay, so we're going to look at the circuit first. All right, I'm not going to go through the properties of ideal op M again. But here we have a circuit. And then this is a different kind of input. Compare with the previous question where the input is a sinusoidal with AC and then grounded to zero. I can put whatever I want one in, inside these two input. All right, so like say if you say here, nobody is grounded, so nobody is zero volt. But this is 3 volt. If this is 3 volt, meaning you are 3 volt, you also 3 volt. Everybody is 3 volt. All the resistance is identical. Okay. So this one is attached to the door. And when I close the fridge door, this switch will close. When I open the fridge door, this fridge will open. Okay. So in this case, right, if let's say 
I want to explain why the polarity of the output will change when the switch closes. We consider what happened when the switch is open and then what happens when the switch is closed. So let's say now when, when S is open. So when S is open, you can assume this, this thing is not there. This is 3 volt, this is 3 volt. Potential divider. They share half, half one. You get 1 1.5. I get 1.5. This is ground because this is zero. If you get 1.5 and I get 1.5, it's because we are the same resistor. Okay. Here to here is one because there are three resistors here. One, one, zero. So three minus 1.5, meaning this point here that is connected to V minus, V minus is 1.5 volt. 0 plus 1.5 is 1.5. So here, the potential difference here to here, uh, from the ground up, we measure everything from ground up one. Isn't that life? So when we measure here to here, this is your V minus, which is 1.5 volt. Just like here, we measure from here to here, this is 2 volt. So your V minus is equal to 2 volt. So which one is, sorry, V plus is bigger, is equal to 2 volts. So which one is bigger? V plus is bigger than V minus, ma, right? So when S is open, V plus is bigger than V minus. The output is uh, positive 9 volt. Okay. Now S is closed. When S is closed, Hmm. I think just so that I make sure I get my marks, I will write down what V plus and V minus is before I conclude. When S is open, the non-inverting input is 2 volt. The inverting input is 1.5 volt. V plus bigger than V minus. Hence, V out is equal to positive 9 volt. Exam can write short form. Uh. I assume mark scheme type short form means exam can write. Uh. But if you're feeling insecure, you write the whole sentence. Uh. Okay, so when S is closed, what happens? When we close S, okay, I'm going to just, for the sake of discussion, it's in the circuit again, and then open S or close S, sorry. So when S is closed, this one is closer. Huh? Now, here is still 3 volt. And this 3 volt now have direct access to this one, making this one 3 volt. Miss, what about this resistor? Nobody care about that resistor anymore because there's a shortcut here. So here to here, will be 3 volt already because it's connected directly to the source, you see. So this is 3 volt. What about V plus? We didn't change anything in the other branch, right? So here to here is still 2 volt. So connected this way, V plus is 2 volt. Okay? So then you, so you are still comparing, so continue. V plus is still 2 volt, but V minus is now 3 volt. So V minus is bigger than V plus. V out is negative 9 volt. Hence, polarity change. Okay? So then they ask you to draw LED, which is very similar to what I've drawn just now, so I'm not going to talk about it. So this is example of how you can use potential divider to decide what the input and output is, how you share the potential. This is actually the easier one. There are some slightly harder ones that you may want to try as that has the potential divider inside. So let me fast forward to recent years. Okay, so what you can do is you can try this one. This one, I think there's a recorded discussion already. So I'll just write down things to try. For comparator, maybe I should put on top, hang on. Let me take out the questions. 
Okay, so for comparator circuits, we have recorded these questions. This is recorded. So you can go and find inside your class post or the playlist. Right, this one are recorded. So you, if you need more example, you can go and watch and learn, or just try the example, or try. Okay, so after this, if let's say you would like to try other questions, I would suggest maybe try three, three or four. So try this one. This should be good enough. Okay. So, or more than enough, actually, because after a while you're like, hey, they're all kind of the same, which is the point of doing past year. So that will be the comparator circuit. All right. Uh, a side note about output devices. Okay. Sometimes uh, we have this thing called a relay. So, well, why did it go up? Okay. Uh, there's this thing called a relay. So if you want to know how to draw a relay, you can go and try the question or you go and look at the examples that we have. La. Okay, so let me see. One, two, three of M circuits. I'm going to fast forward a bit because here is where we branch out and talk a bit about output devices. So part three here is output device. There are a few output device that you should know how to draw. First one I already draw, LED. Second one is relay. And the third one is your voltmeter. Okay, so some videos you can watch if you want to. It's already good enough now. Or just go try the question. Nah. You don't really need to watch the video because they can be quite long. All right, next. What else? Did I do reading? Okay, can. So we are done with the comparator and we can move on. To the second type of question, which has the negative feedback. So negative feedback, right, is closed loop. That's how we know there's negative feedback, well, like I mentioned just now, closed loop. And when it comes to negative feedback, uh, sometimes they will ask you, why do we negative feedback? So number one, the benefit is uh, greater stability. Because when the signal keeps switching on and off, on and off, positive phi, negative phi, positive phi, negative phi, it's not very stable. Lah. So increased stability. Number two, uh, it will have a smaller bandwidth. So a smaller bandwidth, but a smaller gain. We want the gain to be reduced. Okay. And then larger bandwidth. This is good enough. Lah. They are more in the notes. If you want to, you can refer to them. So negative feedback loop got two types. I'm just going to call it 2A. The first one is the inverting amplifier. How we know, how do we know that the amplifier is an inverting amplifier? Well, the telltale sign is V plus is grounded, must be grounded. And of course, there's a closed loop. Okay, so your op M will load something like this. This is plus. The plus is ground. Okay, this is your ground. This is your output. Then this one will close the loop back to the input. Here. Ding, 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 ding. So it must have a closed loop. Point P. Second thing you need to know, explain why P is virtual earth. Refer to your notes for explanation. I think we discussed this either in your test or your trial already. Explain virtual earth. Normally it's three to four mark. Very nice one. And here is your input. And normally we will put another resistor here. Okay. So this is minus. So must have closed loop and V plus is ground. This is grounded. 
So you should know how to derive. You can watch the video to do that. But to find gain, we will take V out over V in. Where is V out? V out is here at the output. Okay, so the ratio of V out over e, V in. Let's say I have two resistors. This is R1. This is R2. The feedback loop is R1. Or sometimes I call RF la, for the feedback loop. Negative RF over R2. This is why whenever uh, this is why we like to have feedback loop because we can adjust the gain or adjust the multiplication factor based on the resistance. I change resistor, I got different gain. Okay, this is the inverting amplifier. Okay, this is the telltale sign. V plus grounded, closed loop. Okay, let's try a question. This is an inverting amplifier. There we go. How do we know? Well, because number one, V plus is grounded. There we go. V plus is grounded. V plus is zero volt. And you have this closed loop situation happening here through the 4.2 kilo ohm. So I'm going to call this RF. And then I'm just going to call this R1. Whatever. There's a, there's a LDR here. I'm a bit concerned, but I'm not that concerned. There's a battery here. Also a bit concerned, but not really. You see this negative terminal? It means that here is negative 1.5 volt. It means that your input is negative 1.5 volt. Okay, sure. So this point here is negative 1.5. Mark X the virtual earth. This is virtual earth. Okay, so very quickly, what is meant by virtual earth? Okay, so you can say that the gain of the op M is very large to prevent saturation. So let's see if you can remember based on your trials. To prevent saturation, V plus must be equal to V minus. Since V plus is grounded, so V plus will be equal to zero volt. Hence, V minus is also zero volt as virtual. So this is what I mean by a can one three mark lay. I see this as bonus. Okay. So next, in bright sunlight, the LDR has a resistance of two hundred ohm. Okay, sure. I'm gonna write two hundred here. Calculate for the LDR in bright sunlight, the voltmeter reading. This 200 and 1, and 1 kilo ohm, they are in series. La, so you can just add the resistance together, okay? So I can look for the gain. Gain is equal to negative RF over R, R1, R2, okay? So this gain is also V out, ratio of V out over V in. Which means to say, if I want to find the V out, which is the voltmeter reading, I will take V in, which is negative 1.5. And this one is negative. What is the feedback resistor? 4.2 divided by 200 plus 1,000. So basically, 4200 divided by 1,000 plus 200. Of course, you can find the gain first. Maybe later need to use. So I'm going to preserve this one on one side. And on the other side, I'm going to take 4200 divided by 1200, which is 3.5. The gain is 3.5, negative. So your output will be negative 3.5 times negative 1.5, which will give us positive 5.25 volt. You can put 5.3 lah. So this is why we call this the inverting amplifier because your input is negative but your output is positive. V in, negative 1.5. V out, positive 5.25. So these two sim change in sign is a hallmark of an inverting amplifier.
we invert the polarity from positive to negative. All right. Just use the equation. If you don't have time to study the derivation, let's hope that it doesn't come up. Okay, okay. Let me keep this one first. Okay, next. The sunlight incident on the LDR become less bright. State and explain. Oh, the good old state and explain. The effect. Whoops, I shouldn't do that. State and explain the effect on the voltmeter reading of this decrease in brightness. Okay, so what happens to the LDR when the sun becomes less bright? The resistance of the LDR. Okay, here's what I can say if it would let me type. No, it won't let me. There we go. When there's less light intensity, resistance of LDR increases. Remember band theory? The electron less energy, so they are less inclined to travel. So the resistance of LDR increases. That means this 200 become bigger. If this 200 become bigger, this ratio becomes smaller. Hence, the gain decreases. Okay, so once again, uh, gain is equal to negative feedback over R1. So this is 4200 over 1000 plus resistance of LDR. If the resistance of LDR increase, then this gain will decrease. If the gain decrease, what happens to the voltmeter reading? Voltmeter. This output less than three point. I mean, the gain will be less than three point five, so the output reading will decrease. Nice, right? This question is an old question, lah. But what about the recent questions? Are they as easy? Recent question hasn't been asking inverting op m la. That's why I couldn't find any. Okay, but you can try them or whatever that they have asked. I have we have already recorded. Okay, so that would be the inverting amplifier. All right, there are quite a few inverting ones that we have already recorded. I will put the example list here for you. So we have record this. You could try, try first, and then if you need to, you can review. Okay, more than enough already. Recently came out this one. This one was a bit different, but it's still manageable. Okay, last circuit. Let's finish this. Home run. 2B, the non-inverting op M. How do we know that a uh, op M is non-inverting? Well, let's compare with this one. The non-inverting of M, the first telltale sign is that you have, obviously you have a closed loop and your V plus is not grounded. Lah. Okay. Um, yeah, just let me check. Because there are two different types of drawing, and I would like to just at least show you how they look like. Okay, so the first type of drawing is this one. Okay, you will notice that your V plus is not grounded, your loop is here. Okay, your V plus is not grounded, your V in is directly con connected to the positive one. So this loop is a telltale sign. Okay, V plus and V minus is not grounded. Nobody is grounded. And then there's a feedback loop. This is another variation of drawing. 
So you can see where is V minus. V minus is in between two resistor. V minus is in between two resistor. I'm going to crop this. Ding. I'll draw on it. So you can see what I'm trying to tell you. Close this. Okay, so, this one. Know oh, that something is non inverting. Let me switch up the highlighter pen. Okay, so look at this loop. This loop has V minus on the mean in the middle. Okay, in between the two resistor and then the other side grounded. This is the same loop. V minus in between the two resistor. And this one grounded. This connection, it looks very different, but they are the same. This connection is this connection. You just draw out the wire only. They are the same circuit. Doesn't look the same, but they are the same. Okay. So how do you know that it's non-inverting? Number one. V minus is in between two resistor in the feedback loop. Feedback loop I already highlight in blue. Look. Okay. And if you want to find the gain, the gain would be one plus ratio of resistor in the feedback loop over the other resistance that is grounded. You call this R1. This is your gain. Zoom out. So the gain for inverting and the gain for non-inverting, the proof is in the video, but if you don't want to know the proof, you can just use the equation. Note that this number is always positive. That's why it's non-inverting. This number is always negative. That's why it's inverting. All right. So since we are here, example sets that are already prepared for you uh, include this tool. Uh, okay. You would like to try some questions regarding the non inverting amplifier. You could try, okay, let's see which one we have recorded. Okay, you can try all of these. Okay, so generally, each type of circuit you do at least three or four, lah. then you will get a hang of it already because they, they tend to be quite repetitive. Okay, let's do some ON20 papers and then we'll call it. So here is a non-inverting amplifier, right? Because V minus is stuck in between two resistor and V plus is not grounded. There's no virtual earth. So this is a non-inverting amplifier, okay? Okay, start from the top. Infinite bandwidth, state what is meant by infinite bandwidth and infinite slew rate. Okay, so one has to do with lag, like one does not lag. And then the other one has to do with how much information it can carry. Okay, so what we'll say is this one doesn't lag, sorry, carry, doesn't lag, so there's no time delay. So you want to know a brief description about each of the ideal op and properties, you can look at your notes. But this one means that there's no time delay, no lag in the change in output when the input is changed. So now I'm sitting at my computer and I'm using a pretty good computer to conduct the class. Now. So there will be no observable lag. But if I use the college laptop, sometimes you will see I write finish one sentence, I have to wait. So my input has changed, but the output is taking some time to appear on the screen. That no lag. In finite bandwidth means the gain, think about your communication, gain is the same for all frequencies. We can take a lot of information. All right, so this thing is non-inverting. You are asked to find the gain of the amplifier. So hopefully you memorize the equation, RF over R1. So the feedback is 
R. Resistance is R, so it's fixed. Wait, we don't have R. Okay, never mind. Let me see. Let me read a bit more. Resistance R is fixed because here you're going to find R, meaning this equation, we are going to use it here. Hmm. Okay, so resistance R is fixed so that the input potential V in of 0 0.5 volt, the amplifier is an, on the point of saturation. So on the point of saturation is this. If you remember our graph, our drawing, right? Let's say this is time. This is potential in volt. So let's say this is V in. V in check increases. Let's say my gain is 3, la, okay? And let's say this V in increases to 3. So V out by right should be 9 volt. Okay, no, time is 3. Hang on. This one is 3. So at this point in time, this one is 3. Let's say the gain is 3. So this one, it means that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The output can go all the way to here. 9 volt. This is 9 volt. So this is the output. Out. Unfortunately, the battery is like, ah, hello, ah, hello. We can only reach 5, okay? Don't be so uh, optimistic. Then the battery or the supply caps it at 5 volt. So that means at 5 volt, this output will flatten. So the actual output that you will get is like this. So it chops up or saturate at 5. So this point here, this point is the point of saturation. Point of saturation. And they say the point of saturation happen when this input is 0 0.40. All right, so calculate low. Gain is also equal to V out over V in. Saturation means output is phi. Output saturation happens at the instant where the input is 0 0.4. So 5 divided by 0 0.4 is 12.5. So the 12.5 is the new gain. La. This one, I don't want to put anything because I don't know. Okay. This is the point of saturation. All right, so the gain is 12.5. Calculate the resistance of resistor R. So, why did I rub that? Never mind. Gain is 1 plus RF plus R in over R1. Gain is 12.51. Feedback is R. What is R1? R1 is this one. 800 ohm. This over this. Always the loop over outside. Loop over outside. Whether it's inverting or non-inverting. So R over 800. You will get R as 9200 ohm. Yay, 6 marks. That's it. Okay. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me change things up a bit. Okay, let's say I want to fix this graph. La. This gain is not 3, right? So, um, okay, maybe don't fix the graph. Let me go and steal, I mean, borrow a graph from your past year. And try to draw a gain of 12.5. Okay, this one, can. This one we use in your example. But I guess we can also use today for this question. If let's say this is your V in and your gain is 12.5. GG or miss? Can I? Well, a bit out la because 12.5 is kind of big. But we want to magnify this by 12.5. So I can definitely magnify 1. 1 is here. Let me zoom in. One is here. This one is when the input is one. When the input is one, we'll get 12.5. So 12 is here, 
13 is here, 12.5 is somewhere here. So your gain is actually like this. Okay, but can it reach 12.5? Yeah? You dream, lah. it can only reach 5, right? So 5 is here. So what will happen there? Eh? It means that your graph will be like this on this line, and then at 5, it will begin to plateau. Level. Plateau, plateau. Look, ah, see here? Everything after this, the entire graph is be going to be bigger than 5. So it will plateau, 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 plateau all the way. Until where it drops. Okay, hang on. This is supposed to be five. So half a box, half a box, half a box, half a box. Until when it drops below this point here. This point. And this point happens to be 0 0.04. This is your point of saturation. Where is my? This is one. This is 0 0.04. So until it drops below 0 0.04, which is somewhere here. So we're going to go all the way here dot, 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 until this point. Then it can begin to drop down to zero here. So this is actually the output that you will get. Everything on top of is chopped away already. We slice it at five. So when you imagine when this one, we magnify it, we drag it very big, the base will look very thick and then we chop it off. Okay, limited by the supply. So this is the point of saturation here. When the V in is 0 0.04, the V out is 5 times 12.5. Okay. For your non inverting input. Okay. I think we are done. Except this one. Okay. So let's complete the circuit and then we can call it a day. By the way, let's see if I miss out anything. You can try this one for non-inverting, try this one for inverting, try this one for comparator. Okay, we're good. Don't forget the properties and why we want to do negative feedback. And also, please know how to draw the output devices. All right, we're done. So just to complete this, we will finish up with this question. You want to complete the circuit because now you have a uh, three resistor. So this op M is used as a comparator circuit. So I will expect a bunch of resistors in series. Part of the comparator circuit is shown. So three resistors, each of 1000 ohm and a negative temperature coefficient thermistor are available to complete the circuit. Okay, I'm going to draw a bunch of circuit. I mean, a bunch of circuit component. So I have this resistor R. Okay, I have another identical resistor R. And then I have another thermistor. So the thermistor is like this. I uh, cannot, I cannot one stroke draw a thermistor. Give up. Okay, this is a thermistor. And I'm going to complete the circuit. So the circuit, wait, I got three resistor. So three. The circuit is to be designed such that at low temperatures, V out is negative five. And at high temperatures, V out is positive 5. Draw the input circuit to the inverting and non inverting input of the op M4 mark. So basically, arrange this bunch of resistors. State a suitable value of the thermistor resistance when the thermistor is at low temperature and at high temperature. Okay, we will settle part A first. When it's cold outside, V out is negative. This means V minus is bigger than V plus. The resistance of the thermistor, I'm going to call this RT, not to retweet, but this is RRR. RT in low temperature is high. Think of your semiconductor, band theory. Electron really lazy to move. So RT is high. If RT is high, V minus can be high if I put V minus across RT. 
very nice. I'm going to do that now. Ding, 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 ding. So this is my RT. Make sure you draw the right symbol. Oh. And then I will draw another resistor here to accompany RT. So this is R, this is RT. Okay, next. Because why your V minus is measured from here to here. So when RT increase in cold temperature, V minus will increase. When V minus increase, V out will be negative. What about the two other resistor? Two other resistor will be here. These two other resistor is used as a stabilizing point. You know, let me draw this one lower a bit. Stabilizing point. Meaning to say, this one is going to connect above, like a flyover, and connect to this one. Okay, this one is connected here. This is not a T junction now; it's a flyover. So this, whatever this voltage is lah, let's just put this one as I don't know lah, twelve volt. So here to here is six. Here to here is six. They share equally. But right now. If let's say this resistance becomes bigger, this potential will be bigger. V minus is bigger. Okay, I'll finish radio. Let's check for high temperature. Fine. High temperature, V out is positive 5 volt. So V minus must be less than V plus. Whee! So at high temperature, the resistance of the thermistor will begin to drop. Again, band theory, resistance are more happy to move so electrons are more happy to move at higher temperature. They got more energy. So from here, your V minus will decrease. If your V minus decrease, it means that it will be less than V plus. Ma. Because V plus is 6 volt. Ma. All right. So for this to be comparable, this RT must be around few thousand one. If this one is 1000 and this one is 120, ma, it's not going to work. So it must be comparable. Okay. So a suitable value for thermistor resistance when a thermistor when this one is at negative 5 low temperature, low temperature, the resistance will increase. So if you increase to 1,001, 2 liter, liao, okay, so maybe increase a bit more, any number, maybe 1,002, and then this one will decrease maybe 800. Okay, so these two answer is dependent on uh, the value of this other resistor. So don't go and decrease. I think generally a 10% increase, a ballpark 10% increase should be enough. Lah. So when it's hot, resistance will drop. Maybe drop to 800. When it's cold, resistance will increase. Maybe increase to 1,002. Okay. Like that law, six marks. So I noticed in the later years, right, the OPM question are not that many marks already. So we will expect anywhere between 6, sometimes can be 10 if there's a graph sketching. Lah. So still about 6 to 10 marks. But we can expect one op-amp question, and also one communication question as a application top topic. So if you tend to study more engineering, it's basically based on this kind of stuff. Lah. You study a circuit, you know how it functions, and then you know how to modify to and suggest values to put in. All right. So that's it for op -M. Uh, don't forget to hang on. Try out certain questions. Okay, so if you need help with comparator circuits, these are the ones. Negative feedback, these are the ones. Make sure you know how to differentiate the circuit. Non inverting op amp, this is the ones. This is the inverting one. And also, the make sure you know how to draw a relay switch. I did not cover that, but this one should be fine. Just a switch and a diode okay so make sure you know how to draw the relay i go and find a photo lah and put here all right so in the meantime you got any questions from the chat ding, ding. well i go and dig out the relay for people where is my relay Output devices.
All right, so if you're all clear, that is good. Give me a sec to pull out the relay. Normally in class, I ask people come up and draw. Part of revision, ma. But never mind. Okay, I found it now. Okay, you will draw a relay like this. Again, please refer to your notes. LED, relay, all that is here. Ta -da. Okay, too big, too big. Hang on. So the relay switch normally will have a coil. Make sure you know how to draw the diodes. Watch the video to understand how the diode works or memorize the setting law if let's say it's too late to understand. Okay, so that's it for OPM. I will see you 